third-party component in a completely different way. Um, then we'll get into implementation strategies and very importantly, laziness pays off. That's my mantra. <laughs> and, and it has to be, uh, especially with zero, because 90% of the people working with zero would try to sell you something you don't really need. So, and that's part of the pretext, we'll get to that. Then we'll get into some best pract practices and some questions. Um, I'm the kind of guy that can speak for hours and hours and hours. So when there's like five, 10 minutes left, if someone could just say, Ronnie, you're running out of time, that'll be pretty good. Um, I hope we can, uh, we can have the question part be quite open. Uh, so if you've got any questions at all, also during the presentations, do ask. Um, it's rare for me to not be able to answer questions uh, on this matter. And uh, part of that is also because I've spent quite a deal, a lot of time on it. Uh, I've been working with search engine optimization for 10 years. Um, well, for 10 years ago, it was more like search index optimization, perhaps, or who could buy the best ranking at a search index. But, um, I'm, I've, and I've worked with search engine optimization quite technically. So uh, kind of what I do is I look at code optimization understanding uh, the algorithms behind, uh, say, Google, and how they actually index your content. Um, so that's part of it. I'm the, uh, the CEO of the general manager of uh, Red Web. Uh, Red Web has a lot of daughter companies here on the Red Host, the DKIRedHost.com, RedComponent.com, and some added projects too. Um, I work a lot with system architecture. So I, I no longer uh, get the chance to do a lot of development myself, but that's basically because I've got 42 employees today working with Joomla, so I use a lot of time on that. But I do do a lot of system architecture. Um, the, the main point on a good component, a good client project, is per se not the development itself, but the pre-planning on how you're going to develop it. Will it actually be sustainable in the long run? So that's a big part. Um, beyond that, I teach uh, Joomla sales strategy four times a year at the International Business College in Denmark. Um, I don't really got time for that, but I've committed myself to do it, so I, I do it. Um, 60 to 70 percent of the people that attend those classes are web and design agencies, uh, advertising agencies. So I do teach a lot of our, our local competitors, if you like, but um, I believe, and that's also the way I'm going to do this, that if you share everything, you raise the level, you empower people, and we all get better. So that's basically a bit of the pretext too. So, SEO starts at home, um, like I said before, going uh, off-site, doing uh, cloaked content landing pages off-site for link building, uh, and all sorts of more or less exotical approaches are perhaps fine. I wouldn't do the cloak part, but the rest I would do. But if your foundation isn't okay, if you haven't really spent the time on your own website, starting at home, then you can work forever on all the external parts and you will never be successful. You will never get to the top. And why is that? Well, simply because the search engines, algorithms, are based on an, uh, an analysis of your content pages. And the way you construct your pages, your code outputs, your internal hierarchy on your website, your content structures will uh, simply count for, for a very large part uh, of the initial um, indexing in Google. Uh, but also, in a lot of cases, you wouldn't even need to work on external link building. There's no need to, link, to do anything external because on, on most, um, in most businesses, in most branches, etc., the competition would be so low and most of the competition wouldn't have the foundation done correctly. So simply by working on your own website, you get the better uh, ranking, uh, search engine rankings than your competitors. So we're back to being lazy. If we can do it ourselves on our own website, then, then why get anyone else to do it? Or some Chinese link farm with 10,000 links or something like that. It's very short term, the value you get out of that. 
Um, part of what I also say is that 90% of all people working with SEO and selling their consultancy on SEO shouldn't be doing so because they don't respect that the foundation has to start at home and you really need to do that. It's okay to help people with external uh, needs, link building, etc. once you have done the foundation. And if you haven't, then don't sell people things they don't need. So um, what is search engine optimization? Well, in short terms, you can say it's about meaningfulness. Now, Ryan just finished his presentation talking about purpose and Google having a purpose, purpose. Well, Google's purpose is actually meaningfulness because when Google can deliver meaningfulness to us, we will use Google to find the things we're looking for on the web. Um, if Google can't provide meaningful results to us, then we won't be using Google. And you, Google can't show their AdWords to us and no one would click them and they don't earn any money. So it's not so complex, it's rather simple. Um, Google does this to an extent where on the AdWords campaign, Google has introduced a quality uh, system to uh, ensure meaningfulness. Uh, that's the quality score you'll get from 1 to 10. If you're at 10, you'll get the raw price as you're supposed to pay for clicks and AdWords. If you have a landing page that's horribly bad compared to the campaign you're running, you'll get a quality score on 0 or 1 and you'll get a hard penalty. So you could pay up to five times as much per click uh, in the AdWords because it's not meaningful. And if it's not meaningful, then the people clicking the ads wouldn't find it usable. And if they don't find it usable, they won't click ads again. So we're back to meaningfulness. Google wants meaningfulness. Now, uh, for us to cater to the meaningfulness, we need to understand how people use the search engines. People used to write car in Google. Today you write car in Google and you get a gazillion pages and I'm thinking, but I only want uh, to find a Toyota from 1994 and it has to be red. And I'd actually like to find it in the London area. So I'll type Toyota, red Toyota 1994 London. So now I get something meaningful out. So if your website has a content structure and a content hierarchy, where you're actually dividing your, your content into sections or rather categories uh, today in the new uh, Joomla that, that, that divides your cars into different brands, into different uh, uh, years, into different colors, or, or, you, or that's the way you describe your, your individual products or pages or whatever it is, then you're going in the same direction as the search engine users would want to find your content. A lot of people sit down, design a website, do eight menu items, put on content, and they're done, but they're not really considering what are they doing? What's the reasoning behind doing this content structure? And, and we have to, to spend a few minutes considering where we're actually going. We have to fulfill the meaningfulness. So that's our base purpose when working with the website. So we have to actually go back and start with content structure. Then we have some technical parameters that are vital. Uh, it's actually reducible to pretty much this. We have the page title. On the initial indexing of a web page in, in, uh, in Google, Google doesn't know the internal structures or the hierarchy on your website. So Google would look solely on the individual content page and the page title would, would get a value score on up to 40%. So a good example was when we launched Red Host initially uh, in Denmark. Uh, as I registered the domain, I did a page title, uh, uh, Joomla web hosting and something else, uh, uh, meets a description like that, and we have had an image on the page just with our logo. So after three days, and that's a bit of a specialty because Denmark is such a small country, so we don't have a sandbox in Google. So when I change something, I can see the results instantly. As soon as the robot or the crawler has been through the site, I can see the new value. That also means I don't have to wait four months to see if my experiments work. I can wait a day and then I know. So uh, it's much easier to work with. But what happens is our blank page with only a page title, a meter description and an image was number one in Google and nothing else. That's the initial score. That's how powerful it is. Then over time, as Google knows the page, 
in relation to the other content for the domain, and it's been there a while and it comes back to check it again, the value will drop, so the page title will drop down to around perhaps 20%. It's still very, very important. But this means, as we know, the initial factor parameter that has the highest meaningfulness to work with is the page title. Our work would typically start here. Of course, we have to have the right content structure. We have to have some content text in the long term that makes sense, that is meaningful, uh, meaningful for, for the meaningfulness we, we, uh, we wish to uh, reach. But if our page title goes in the same direction, we'll get a lot of added value. Now, um, the page heading is the next parameter, primary pa parameter. Um, the page title should, of course, come out in an H1 um, HTML tag. Now, uh, on Joomla 1.5, that is, of course, not the case, that, because that's the old table-based code and it's not an H1. So, uh, as a standard, Joomla 1.5 would never render your website optimal for the search engines. So you would have to find solutions for that, but I'll get into that later. But now, if the page title says, Red Toyota 1994 London area, or used Red Toyota 1994 London area for sale, and our page heading said the same, our search engine friendly URL said the same too, uh, our meter description, and that's uh, a thing to notice before the meter description was like the, the the advertising text below your link in Google. But the last six months, um, the start of the meter description has had a big added value in terms of the search engine uh, rankings. So you'll get an additional 4 to 5% of the meter description by utilizing it correctly today. So if that also says the same, and then our content actually will say the same too. There used to be some ground rules. You could say if, if, if uh, your page says, uh, apples, uh, three to five percent of the content text, then you're pushing in the right direction. When you really fine tune it, you would find it should be between 4.75 and 4.99 percent of the word should be your primary search word. Then you get the optimal effect. But Google has, of course, realized that people has, has gotten to know the algorithm a little too good, and Google will constantly try and, and stop us manipulators of the system. Uh, to exploit it. So Google is starting to look a bit more um, quality based on your content and not per se just a quantity state where it goes in and check, uh, checks the ratio of one word compared to the rest of the text. But if the content also says used red Toyotas 1994 in the London area. Now, then we are basically pushing all the, the primary parameters. If our internal link structure, meaning our menu, if our menu is also ha has an anchor text that's part of our primary search phrase, then we're adding the last bit of the value. Now, beyond these parameters, are there other things? Yes, there is, like using bold or italic or uh, using H2, H3 for subsections or paragraphs and stuff like that. Uh, should you do alt uh, descriptions on your images? Yes, that's pretty nice if you've got people who can't see or if you've got too much time to use, do put an alt tag on your images. But let's just keep it in a perspective. Page title, 40%, alt tags, 0.5%. Now, I'm a lazy guy. I work 100 hours a week, but I'm a lazy guy. So would I spend my time on doing alt texts or page titles? It's not really brain surgery what you should pick. Now, how Google works is Google would take these primary parameters, do a, a, a score for each of them, and say, oh, yes, the page title has a 95% match on this search phrase. The page heading has an 86% match, and downwards. And then the real secret is, because this is not a hidden secret, so something like that. The secret is, when Google then sums them up, it does a weighted average. So each element has a different weight in, in the final score, and you would get the final sum, and that would say, oh, well, this page, the content structures are okay, all the parameters are telling you, me the right things, and the code base is all right. So we would be starting around 80%, and we have, do have done absolutely nothing externally. But since 70 or 80% of our competitors out there 
doesn't have the proper foundation, we're already ahead. In a lot of cases, we could be ahead by 40 to 50 percent. So even if they go out and do link building for two or three years, they wouldn't even get up to us. So that, that, that's basically the main idea of what I'm going to tell you today and dig into it. Now, we've forgot one primary parameter. I didn't have room for any more, but that's the domain name. Starting 1st January last year, Google uh, put in uh, the domain name itself as a parameter with a 4 to 5% value. So what happens is if you're doing a, a web shop for a client and they want to sell uh, cheap used cars, well, if the domain name is cheapusedcars.com, they'll get 5% added value. So if we know that, then we are basically around 85%. And still, we haven't really done anything. With the proper setup of, of third-party components, etc., this would be all an automatic process. So once we create our content, everything will come out naturally like this, like we do with RedShop also. All of this would be completely automated. So if we take our RedShop clients, we did a fashion furniture webshop three months ago. After six days, they had 3,500 product pages in Google. 90% of those pages were on page one. 50% were in top three. So now the, the fashion furniture store is, is looking to do uh, a turnover the first year on uh, 750,000 pounds. And it's three months old. The project was paid in 42 days, magic number. So we have 42 employees. <laughs> we, we held a, a job meeting at our office uh, a few weeks ago. We had 42 attendees. So uh, everything is just 42 these days. It's good. <laughs> so, um, but that's basically, that's the, that's, that's the general headlines and the main parameters we will be working with. So, getting to the top of the search en engines, well, the importance of the foundation and the code as I went into, and there's a lot of aspects to that, because Google is not a human. Google would never look at your design and say, oh my gosh, what a brilliant design. Google is not able to. Google might be able to at some point. They're working hard on doing recognition of images for a, a visual a search, and that will come the next two to three years. So be careful what kind of images you leave out there. At some point, Google will show them and understand them, even without all texts. But um, it means that we have to focus a lot on our foundation. We need to assure that we help the, the, the crawlers and the analysis part uh, to um, take what is actually just purely um, quantity and convert it into quality. So um, what's important on that is also the ability to handle and alter the main parameters. Now, in a default Joomla installation, on 1.5 especially, you would really not uh, have the right tools for the job. Yes, you could do the keywords. Notice I didn't even mention the meter keywords. Google hasn't been using the keywords for five to six years now. So, so don't spend time on that. If you want to get into Bing or Yahoo or uh, some of the big Asian search engines, uh, you still want, would want to use them. But if your market is Google, like in Denmark, Google has 96% of all searches. And we're pretty lazy, so and yeah, we'll go for that. The last 4% can find us if they like it. So, um, so, but the ability to handle and alter the main parameters is essential. Now, in, uh, in Joomla 1.5 per se, could you handle the page title? Well, yes, you could, um, because it would just take the title of the article. Could you handle and manipulate the Ceph URL? Uh, it's a bit harder. You could, to some extent, as the title would be part of it, but it wouldn't really be optimal. Also, because you would get a lot of content structure hierarchy inside the Ceph URLs, you might not want to. Uh, the longer the Ceph URL gets, the further down uh, uh, in the hierarchy it comes, the lesser value it would have. So if your red used Toyota was uh, eight uh, levels down in your Ceph URL, it would have a very little value. So we want to push them further up. Now, um, so what would we do uh, to do that? I'll actually, I think I'll come a bit more into it a bit later, so let's slide on here. But another thing that's super, super important is going outside the box. Going outside of the box means that 
everyone wants to be number one on cars, but it's not easy and it might not be the right strategy. If we're talking AdWord campaigns and you buy an AdWord campaign on cars you, and you're selling a red Toyota from 1994 in the London area and it's used, you would be paying for 99.99% .99 of the clicks you couldn't use to anything. So basically, you, you don't want to pay for an AdWords campaign on cars. It wouldn't make sense. Your contact price would be extremely high. You would never make, make a profit on that. So you would want to do AdWords campaign on the narrow uh, ter terms, the search engine, uh, sorry, the search phrase and not the search words. And that's the long tail strategy. Basically, it means that the first column, the first 20% is where everyone is. That's the general ideas, the general concepts, the singular words of one or two words phrases. But in the long end of the tail, there will be four or five words in each phrase there wouldn't be a lot of competition. But that's also where you find the best people, the people that are actually looking for the things you offer them. So your contact prices would be extremely low and there would be less competition, so your prices in general on your AdWords campaign would be next to nothing. So finding 100 uh, long tail search phrases and doing a campaign on that would mean that you could drastically improve your profit on running the campaigns now, if we do the same thing on our website for the organic part, then it starts to get really interesting because we also want to attract the right people for the right content on our website. So we're going to go long tail on our website in general <coughs> by doing the proper narrow down structures where our landing pages down on the fourth or fifth level are completely narrowed in. We're going for the same segmented, very narrowly segmented audience. The, the upside is when you do a lot of web shops, and, and oh my god, I've done a lot of web shops. I don't know, 400 or 500 web shops, a lot of web shops. What you also find out is that the people who use like five keywords on Google to search into a narrow, specific topic and come into your website would buy a lot more. The average order on people who are specific is a lot higher. So you're actually by spending time finding the right customers, you're earning a lot more money on your web shop. And the same would be if you're running a website and you want to sell services or have people read about something or you're running a, anything basically. As long as you find the proper audience, you'll have a lot better success with it. So, um, and that's basically the point here is landing pages match the content to the search rates. That is the, the main priority. Now, um, and of course the user underlying there, but, but that's pretty much it. The last thing I'll, I'll go into here is, uh, is the language as a primary parameter. A lot of people don't really understand that. But what happens is, hi <laughs> Hagen, uh, I'm, I'm Danish, so when I search on something on my computer, I'll get a uh, search result up that are Danish, because I have Danish language on my computer. So even though I'm in London now, we could just um, try and do it like this. <clears throat> if I have to log in again, I think we'll just drop it, but uh, let's try and see. Yeah, okay. We're dropping it. Um, so, but the thing is, when I search something, I would get things that are primarily related to my language on my computer. So if you want to go out into foreign markets and you've got one website with five languages on it, then you will never have any form of success in your secondary languages. Google will simply take your primary language and your domain and put them together and say, oh, this website is, is primarily Danish. So if you want to go out to the French market or the German market or something like that with your content, you will never have success. It's simply not possible. Because when Google shows the search engine results to people sitting in France and Germany, they will start by taking out the ones that has primary language that's French or German. So using Jumfish on a Joomla website, as Jumfish works today, is very, very, very bad. 
you will never have any form of success using it. I had a talk with, um, with Alex, uh, who's behind Yumfish, three weeks ago, and I said to him, Alex, if I can pick one thing for the future of Yumfish, I would like it to be that Yumfish can utilize subdomains so we can put a language tag in front of the, each domain, domain name virtually as a subdomain and split our content uh, in different languages out like that because then we wouldn't have one domain name, we'd have one domain name per language and all primary languages. And I think Alex didn't quite know that detail, how that works, so he was quite interested and I think that's part of what he's going to work with in the next version of Jumfish. And then I'll start to tell people, Jumfish is so nice, I like it. But uh, Joomla 1.7 multi-language is horrible too. It, it's, it's not a good idea. So what I tell people is uh, make your website in English. When it's done, copy it. Do a subdomain like de.domain.com, translate it to German, and you're done. Link between them and that's it. Then you would actually have a site that would come up in search engines in Germany. And, and if, if you run a web shop and you don't have any visitors, you won't have any customers, and yeah, it's not a good business. So um, prime language as a primary parameter is extremely important because that's, uh, uh, it's pretty much supersedes the other parameters. So if your language doesn't fit, it really doesn't matter. Now, in terms of Joomla, SEO and Ceph, as I said before, Joomla does poor SEO and Ceph, especially in Joomla 1.5. Uh, in Joomla 1.7, it's better. The Ceph handling in 1.7 is a lot better. Huge improvements. You can actually work with it from within uh, the Joomla administration. But uh, on Joomla 1.5 and 1.7, there's still issues. Issues with duplicate content, poor code output, and marginalized controls. You don't really have control of the elements you want to handle. So uh, how can we solve these problems? And although Joomla 1.7 is on the right path, we must still realize to some extent that the people developing Joomla 1.7 in the core are good people, but they're purely developers in their mindsets. When some of the talks I've had with some of them, they go, well, SEO doesn't matter, does it? No, of course not, if you don't want the world to know what you're building. Uh, but but uh, that, that's part of the picture. You, you really have to take in all the parameters to get the full picture. And Joomla also has to evolve into to understanding and and, uh, and catering to the full picture. But uh, thank God there's a lot of third-party SEO and Ceph extensions that will help you. Uh, I always use SH4 for Ceph, and I do that because I think it's the best product on the market. We have integrated it for all our components, and in RedShop, RedShop actually controls SH4 for Ceph, but I'll show that in a bit. Now, the basic way to get started, if you're not utilizing any third party, the thing is on SH4 Ceph, you can just click, out, uh, click off a few pointers and it will convert all your page titles to H1. It will make secondary H1s to H2, H3s, etc. It will uh, prevent duplicate content. It, you can go in on Joomla 1.5, click a button, and it will replace the standard table output of Joomla 1.5 with a div-based one. That's a lot better for the search engines too. So, so SH4 for Ceph is a, a wonder solution for Joomla 1.5. It's a little less of a wonder for 1.7, but it still gives you a, a super lot of controls. And the new version, the flow of uh, managing things has become a lot quicker and easier. But for starters, what you would do is when you do templates and you, you do template overrides, you would actually go and do template override for the com content. And you would do it for categories, for sections for 152, and for the articles. If you're utilizing uh, block layouts or the regular list layouts, you would go in and do new template overrides where you do proper code uh, quality. In an extreme case, if I wanted to do a website in a business that had super hard competition, I would go in and completely redo the template. I would start by putting out, of course, the header with the metadata, page title, and such. But then when the actual body started, I would start by putting out the page title in an H1, then I would put out the page content, and then I would put out the menu structures, and then I would put out my modules and the rest. So I would basically create my code output completely structured as the, in, in the optimal way for the search engine to analyze and understand my content. Because these, the little crawlers are quite busy bees. 
So there's a limit to how much they can understand, there's a limit to how much they can go through, and the things they get presented for, uh, at, uh, for first will have the biggest meaning also. So by doing advanced template overrides with uh, custom style sheeting, where you actually displace and move around the elements, so even though you start by putting out the content, it would of course not be seen for the users as the start, but in its natural place, you could add quite a lot to the value of your websites in, in the engines. Yeah? Ronnie, um, just on that, on using standard templates and template clubs, are there any that are better than others for this sort of thing? In general, in general, uh, there's, the template clubs have become a lot better, a lot better. But there's a big problem that all the template clubs are using uh, frameworks today. So instead of loading uh, five files, and a super fast template. You know, some, some of them are loading 100 plus files, seven, eight JavaScript files, 10, 20 CSS files. A lot of, now they're putting in HTML5 compensation uh, frameworks inside their own frameworks and they have like 80 or 100 additional files and then they compiled a lot and put it out. That means your load times would be drastically impacted. Now, uh, in the past, I've sometimes had some jobs where people used the standard template and the load time was three and a half to four seconds. So they've asked me to do a template from scratch that looked like their template club templates with a new logo in it, but it was done properly. And then the load time went from four seconds to 0 0.2 seconds. So the impact is huge. And, and that's the price of using a template club template or, or something like RTSD or other things is that it won't be optimized, it won't be scalable, it won't perform at its best. And for Google, Google has actually started to put a lot of value on the load times. So if your load times is above 1.5 seconds, you will get a penalty. So you have, that, you have to, do, to, to really look into that. Some of the template club templates have become quite quick today too. They will perform at around 1.5 to 2 seconds. But some of the templates that are like a year old, a lot of those would come out with three, four second load times. So it's, it, it's an area to really be careful about. Um, I, I wouldn't name names, but some of the template clubs does a lot better quality than others. I think that's a fair way to say it without naming anyone. So, um, but in the end, it comes down to controlling the code output. Now, the easy solution for that is, of course, utilizing a third-party extension. But, but just to sum it up, is it worth spending resources on SEO? Yes. I haven't found a single argument, whatever, anywhere, where this could come up with a no. Of course, except for the classic, my website doesn't need to be found. I just built it for myself and my dog. Fair enough. <laughs> you don't need to work with this. So, um, on the third party, uh, we have sh 447 um, In RedShop, which is uh, the web shop system we, we've done for, for Joomla, we decided to utilize sh 447 but in a new way. We decided to put uh, the entire control layer into RedShop. So, RedShop and sh 447 they, they are pretty happy about each other, but uh, it's RedShop that wears the pants. And that's quite important. So when you go into a product page in RedShop, the third tab would be called SEO. So when you're editing your normal pr product, you just hit the SEO tab, and you can change all the primary parameters right there. Do the same for categories, for manufacturers. But um, <clears throat> if you don't want to do it manually, you go into the configuration, um, and then you can just now, this is for the product page, actually. Oh, well, the fourth tab is SEO. And you've got the page title, page headings, a new Ceph URL. If it's a member of different categories, which category should it belong to? You do keywords, page description, language setting, robot text. A new thing is we're implementing uh, canonical URLs too um, as a solution against duplicate content. Uh, in RedShop, we, we built a RedShop recently for our, our, a cruise ship uh, company. And on each product, there's a date range too. But all of these, perhaps 40 different pages that needs to be unique are actually duplicate content. So what we're doing is we're adding a canonical layer. So 
the, the, the virtual uh, attributes that are created that create new Ceph URLs, we will also implement a way to pick out the main product and automatically do canonical URLs to prevent the duplicate content penalties. But this is on the product page, but in the configuration, you can go in to RedShop and you can create it yourself. So if you want the page title to consist of product name, category name, product name from shop name, that's the tags you set in. So there's a tagging system where you can create your own logics and dynamics. This means that once you have done this, because you have full control of the process, you finish it, you click save, and your entire web shop would be automatically populated with the proper parameters at the right place. So our used red Toyota from 1994 in the London area would actually go out in all the proper places. Under the hood, or behind the pants, if you will, uh, it's SH44 that are doing this. And the reason why we picked SH44 Ceph is because the way SH, uh, it's a long name to keep saying, but SH44 Ceph handles the internal routing in Joomla. It's a lot more advanced, it's a lot better, especially than Joomla 1.5. The rule in Joomla 1.5 is really, really not good. It's a cause of uh, much grief and uh, insane amount of duplicate content and penalties. But in 1.7, it's a lot better, although not perfect. But SH447 will handle these issues. Very, very simple. Is there other third-party components? Yes, there is. Uh, there is uh, ACEF, I think, YUMCEF, uh, other solutions. Have I tried some of them? Yes, I have. Um, are they usable? Yes, they are. But I do prefer to use SH447. So I think uh, Victor Drover from Anything Digital, I think I sent at least a thousand customers to his web shop to buy it. But I also use it on all sites. I don't know what it costs today, it's 40 or 50 dollars or something like that to get it. Then you can use it on all the sites you build. But considering how many hours of work you can save on this, and remember, I'm a lazy guy. So, so I'd gladly pay the 40, 50 dollars for that. Now, getting to the laziness pays off. We want to go for the most effect with the smallest effort. And, and going out to the yard picking an apple, you would pick the apple from the lowest hanging branch. You wouldn't get out a ladder and climb to the top to get an apple. That just wouldn't make sense. So we only work when it's needed and we select our fights. Working with search engine optimization is an endless effort. Understood like there will always be new competitors. There will all be competitors getting new systems. They will actually start to do the same things you're doing. So you have to continue the work. At some point, once all of the internal work is done, when my big mantra of starting at home is done, you would also need to go external. You do small sale block sites and good domain names. Just standard Joomla sites with a standard template on, do some categories and then do the proper anchor text to your main website. It's a simple and easy way to do it. Some people go out and they buy links at link farms and stuff like that. And yeah, uh, 3,000 links from some uh, uh, Chinese link farm uh, CEO company will work for a day or two, but the value is very small. If you go out, say, um, in the London area, if there was a club for Toyota owners that had a forum where they're talking about the Toyotas and how to style them and stuff like that, if you could do a deal with them, you send them a, four new wheels for the owner's uh, Toyota, and he put in a small link for you, uh, cheap uh, used uh, Toyotas uh, over to your Toyota side. That single link could be worth more than 10,000 links. So it's not about the volume, and link farms and stuff like that is completely meaningful, meaningful, uh, meaningful uh, less, yeah, meaningful, uh, without meaning. So we need to find the meaningfulness like that too. Uh, select your files is basically uh, an idea of, yeah, do you want to do the page title or the alt tag? Well, we'll do with the page title. So we do what gives the most value. Now, another thing I tend to like is what I call spreadsheet mania. Because over time, you will lose focus. You will forget what is, it, what is you're actually working on. If you run a website with 10,000 content pages, at some point, even if it starts with 500, you will lose the bigger picture. So uh, Startup Excel or uh, any other uh, spreadsheet program, 
You start by four, five or six columns. Uh, write down your primary search word, the search phrase, the link to the page you're working on, perhaps even the AdWords campaign you're running it on, the landing page, uh, and add in what you like. Keep it simple from the start, four, five, six columns. And then do it downwards. Go through your content hierarchy and enter all the uh, content pages you have. You can also place them in categories of different areas you're working on. Then make sure that in one of the columns you would have a column called goal, meaning that some of your content pages would be temporary pages or would be middle layer pages. Like if you have 10 pages on Toyotas, you only want one of them to gather all the information because that would take all your information from your content hierarchy and it would pull it all together on one page, meaning it would boost it because your internal linking would link to one page. Now to do so, you would go into the nine other pages and do a unique link anchor text into the one page you want to get up front. So by doing that, you can control which page would have the highest ranking in Google. But to do this in the long term, and to keep a control on that, or, or a form of overhead on what you're actually doing uh, and some sort of goal, it's very hard to do without the spreadsheet. So spreadsheet mania, here we are. After three years on a site with 10,000 pages, you would have maybe 20 columns and a, a spreadsheet so big you could kill people if you dropped it on them. So, but, but it's really, really nice. Now, I do another thing else called guerrilla approaches. And it's basically about putting things down at the level where they actually are. Like, like this talk is about seven, six or seven parameters. It's not brain surgery. Anyone sitting here after this presentation can go home to the website and in a matter of, well, in, uh, here you have, you, you have a sandbox. So in a matter of a few months, you would see huge effects by utilizing what we're talking about today. Really, really huge effect. But um, this is kind of the same way, but on the analysis level. When you're doing this and you want to think a bit, about, a bit more about it, uh, you could try and, and print out five pages with one search phrase on each. Go into your neighbor and tell them, uh, if you look at these five pages, tell me what you think when you read it. So you take the five pages and you show them one and you listen to what they say immediately. It isn't, it isn't hard science. You're not doing a survey or uh, something like that with a thousand respondents. But you're going out and finding perhaps five or ten people that could be in your segments and you're asking them. And that would qualify your work in, uh, greatly. One of the problems often is that people are blinded by their own knowledge. Like I did for, um, for a dentist in Spain, he wanted to hire me as a consultant for dental tourism. So I said to him, send me a list over the 10 search words, search phrases you think uh, are the most important ones. Then I checked them, the eight of them were full of, uh, <coughs> the eight of them were full of technical terms that only dentists would use. His customers would never use these uh, terms. How long? You're okay, because we're running 15 minutes late, it doesn't matter, because the schedule's just moved forward. So if you look at your agenda, you kind of add 15 minutes to everything, and, and it will work out. Um, but when this session finishes, anyone who hasn't ordered pizza, please can you add your name to the clipboard, because it's going to Pizza Express at 20 past 20. Thanks, guys. And remember, Rockin' rock, rock is paying. Yeah, exactly. It's free. <laughs> did, I, did I mention I run a hosting company, too? No. <laughs> um, so ask your neighbors, ask your customers, uh, get the initial responses and try and use them to something. Um, you can also, if you're running a website, uh, get a hold of 10 of your users and, and send them a small mail and ask uh, what do you feel, stuff like that. Send them a bottle of red wine or uh, a small flower or something like that. It's a cheap way of actually getting something useful into the system. Uh, when you're doing web designs, uh, you can do the same thing. Print it out. The markup, show it to five or ten people, get the initial responses. You'll get so much value out of that. And it's not, it's not a hard thing to do. It's very simple. It's so simple, so a lot of people wouldn't do it because, oh, it's too simple. But it works. Now, we move on to a bit of implementation strategies. Landing pages is something everyone talks about. And um, there's different kind of land landing pages. We have campaign uh, pages. Campaign pages are typically uh, two things. Either they are hooked up to an AdWords campaign that are running in some sort of, of given period of time. 
So we want to do some landing pages that solely work for this campaign. Once the campaign is over, we don't need the content anymore. Of course, we don't want to give away the content value in the search engine, so when we're done, we'll do three or one redirects to other pages to pick up the value. But it's a more temporary uh, situation, content page-wise. We have theme pages. Now, a theme page is something quite interesting. Because a theme page is built for the long haul. A theme page is something we want to uh, pull in people from the, from the search engines for the next five or 10 years. So when we do a theme page, if we were selling red Toyotas from 1994 in the London area that was used, we could do a theme on how to cater for your engine in your old red Toyota from 1994 and on. So if you do that, oh well, if you, if you give, use um, this oil, to, I don't know anything on cars, stupid uh, example I'm using, but hey, if, if, let's we give people tips on how to maintain uh, the engine, or how to change tires uh, optimally in the season, or something like that. I really don't know anything about cars, but then over the next years, what happens is that uh, year one, well, maybe 10,000 people would Google parts of this, and if no one else is doing a theme on it or guide on it, well, then your page would come up pretty high. Now, if you have search engine optimized your theme or guide pages, you'll pick up quite a bit of these people. If you then happen to sell something or give information, something that's related to that, you'll have a rather big deal of goodwill on it. And from that goodwill, you'll increase your loyalty base, you'll increase the amount of sales you can do. So spending an hour on a theme page or a guide page and having 5,000 visitors over the next five years is pretty good value. So that's one of the, the really good landing pages. Now, there's of course also blog pages, and blog pages can be internal, external. The internal ones on your domain name should always have the best content. You want the best content on your primary domain name. You would never do the best articles externally. Like people, for years people have been doing website, web shop, Facebook, external blog, blog number two, and they're putting away all of their best value, which is the content, to all sorts of domain names, not on their own website. Completely nuts. You want to pull everything back to your own domain name, all the high quality content, because in the long run, it's the high quality content that would assure your places in the search engines. So blog pages can be good, and external blog pages can be good too, but you want to make them not quite as good as your own content. So we want to utilize the external blocking for creating value in the search engines where we transfer the, the, the value to our, our, to our own uh, website. Now, another uh, landing page type is, of course, search as a landing page. For RedShop, we've built a component called Red Product Finder where you can create your own landing pages in the search engine. All of them would be search engine optimized, search engine friendly URLs, etc. Uh, no other web shop system on the planet has done that yet. So, but it's a really powerful tool for doing something like that. Um, a lot of search engines today, also in Joomla, would mostly render out one URL in your system. So you only got one page basically covering all of your searches. But all of your searches could be potential. Uh, potentially interesting areas of content or collection of content. So if you have like five or seven or eight different pages that are pulled together on one search uh, result page, what happens is you have a unique collection of the content. So for narrow searches in the search engines, that collection of content, the actual search result, would be very interesting because it's very long tail, it's very specific for a lot of people. But the search engines don't allow you to take a Ceph URL for, for that search and block a link to it so the search engines picks it up. So that's an area we will see more development in. And, and as I said, we did Red Product Finder for RedShop. Now, there are other kinds of landing pages. There are uh, hidden pages on your own website, cloak pages, stuff like that. I would never do them, uh, basically. It's very short term, the value you get, and even though you can boost things massively, when Google finds out and your domain name gets deleted in Google, it's not so funny anymore, so keep it in the boundaries. Um, there's also some external efforts like content placement. Uh, if you know of a website with a very high value, a good example could be like websites for mothers to be pregnant women 
they meet on forums and they write. Now, if you were able to place like three, four lines of text regarding one of your products and link over to your web shop, that'd be super. The value on some of those forums are extremely high. Really, really high. I had an example with a client that was number 18 in Google on specific search that had a text and a link like that from one of their customers on this website. And uh, three weeks later, they were number two in Google. The only change at all in that period of time was that single link and text that was content placed. So content and link placement and, and the interaction between the two is very, very good. Link farm is, is useless, more or less. In the long run, it doesn't matter. Also because Google would always want meaningfulness to be the primary focus. So at some point, even though you get short-term value, you would lose all value. Google will learn to fill out the value of link farms. Rest assured. Like Google, the last year's time, Google has been trying to remove the value from affiliate systems, affiliate pages, people doing blog sites and stuff like that to put up uh, fake content to put in affiliate links. And affiliate pages around the world are dropping out of the indexes completely. And that, that's good because they don't add value to the people who are using the search engines. Yeah? Uh, I, I, just, I have uh, some questions I was building up. I don't know if you're coming towards the end. I'll, I'll ask a few. Um, yeah? How does SH404EF work with uh, forum within Joomla, uh, like 1.7, i.e. Uh, uh, so, Jump Social or Agora or CCKs as well, like K2 or Jerry's, because you mentioned how it would automatically yeah. you know, replace the one. The thing is, for, for a lot of components, SH447 already works. Like the uh, Kunina already works uh, on the forum side. Jum Social already works. Uh, K2 already works. K2 does have another problem. Uh, K2 does not per se follow the it uh, element ID, the item ID structures of Joomla. So you could be in a situation where you menu your items to K2 things, or if you use modules to produce links to K2 elements, would not give you the proper relations. Because it's not conical. Yeah, and, and because it's not, yeah, but the thing is on Joomla, when you create the menu item, you get the item ID. And in Joomla, the item ID is what relates the content with the menu, with the modules, etc., etc. That is tied into the router, so the search engine friendly URL would use the element ID or the item ID as one of the primary factors for knowing exactly what to show. So, so it's quite important, but K2 won't utilize this unless you manually do links to all of your content. But that's because they don't really value the importance of Ceph yet. They will at some point. Um, do you have the same, like if anyone has worked with Virtumart, Virtumart isn't done in Joomla at all. So you, even if you do many items, you have no item IDs. So you can place modules and stuff like that. It's held to on that part. Yeah, it, to some extent, you have settings in SH447 where you can guess the item ID, or you can insert the menu name, if nothing else, so you force it to be unique self URL. So you have options you can tweak on. On Jupyter 1.5, those options were really important, because on some components, it would be, uh, yeah, guess an item ID. But on 1.7, it's a lot better. So it's hugely improved. Um, so uh, on top of that, us third-party component builders are actually able to do extensions to SH4 for Ceph and other Ceph uh, extensions. So we can do a small plugin and install, and then it will control it. Um, if in general, if people use um, <coughs> yeah, alternative uh, names for what the value is you actually want to do, um, then you can use a small component like Redlinker we do. In Redlinker, you can go in and create a new entry. You can write uh, the short term and then you write the long one. Then any time a user would write the short term, we would automatically translate it to the long term when it shows. Redlink, or Redlinker actually. It's, it's super simple. But you know, if you have a website with a thousand content pages and you do, uh, you do manually links between your content, 
then suddenly something changes and you go, oh my, now I've got to sit and change content links on 1,000 pages. You don't want to do that. So if you use Redlink, instead you can just create them in there. And will that also work in a or whatever? It will work in, in uh, all components that utilize the content plugin layers. So not all components does that, so, so it depends. But like any content plugin for Joomla would work in RedShop and would also work in a lot of other components. But a lot of other components, again, wouldn't support or utilize content plugins for Joomla. But like with RedShop, it's interesting because if you want to show graphs or tabs or sliders or anything, you just install any regular co content plugin for Joomla and it works right away on all the content. So uh, yes? Any more questions? Yeah. Yeah. On the, on, the, on the basis of being lazy, um, landing pages that last forever. When I'm searching Google, I just hate getting results that are five years out of date. So they, these days, I tend to search within a uh, time period. Yeah. Is there some lazy way to take those static pages and update them? Yeah. There is. The lazy, it's a bit more technical, but what you can do is you can timestamp the content. So you can do a small plugin that in the bottom of all your pages would write, this page was last updated seven days ago. <coughs> and, and that's actually enough. Another method of doing it is using a tag cloud module. Uh, in the side of your page, do a small tag cloud module that shows the 20 most used uh, terms in uh, uh, in your content. And if you click it, it goes to the search pages. That little module would do that every time a crawler visits your website, it'll say, oh, there's new content. And it'll come back even quicker and say, oh, there's new content, come back even quicker. And it will be new all the time. So um, when we do SEO blocks, we do the, the tag cloud modules all the time. Very efficient. Um, so uh, uh, we have a few best practices, and then I think we are uh, at the end, so let's just run through the best practices. Keep the best content on one domain name. And remember, content is king in the long term. So the content really has to be the long term strategy. Do syndication, content placement, external link building, etc. But as I said, remember, content uh, is king. On syndication, I think we might have forgot that. So let's just do it quickly. Do use RSS engines. Use them a lot. Do use other forms of syndication of your content. There's a small component for Joomla called AutoTweet NG. If you install that, you can take like any forum post and you can tweet it. Or whenever you write an article, you can tweet it. You can also send it to Facebook. Sending out parts, remember, only parts of your content to Twitter or to Facebook or other social media or search, uh, RSS search engines, etc., would give you small pluses and you can automate them. So instead of doing it manually, why not set it up automated? It's really, really easy to work with. Consider the multilingual, multilingual approaches by uh, cloning and subdomains of different TLDs per language. Or wait that Alexi finishes uh, Jungfish, so it actually will do it for you <laughs> automatically. Uh, use analytics as a tool for improving your work. Meaning, if you don't use Google Analytics already, or, or something similar like that, do get it installed right away because you will get all the proper information. You will know what people have actually typed when they searched in Google. A little tip also, if you're going into a new market or for, uh, on behalf of a new client, start an AdWords campaign. Put in the 300 pounds or something like that, and for 48 hours, run a campaign on all the general uh, uh, terms or search words. What happens is if you run a campaign on 300 pounds for two days on the, on the word cars, you will get any word uh, at all that's used with cars in Google for those two days, you can go in and get the actual list of what people in England have been typing in Google for the last 48 hours. Now then you can put that in a spreadsheet and sort it uh, based on uh, what is uh, used most, the most frequently. And you actually got the right knowledge, the real knowledge, to base the rest of your work on. So instead of guessing, doing all sorts of other tools or search word tools of Google, all these things don't deliver live results or real results. They're guesstimating. So, Sorry uh, to interrupt. Yeah. Out of time, I'm afraid. The oh. next sessions are starting. Okay. But uh, then it's very lucky that we are basically down to the questions. <laughs> the we had some. Any more? Any last can we, questions? Can we do questions at 
lunchtime, would that be okay with you? Because literally everyone else is starting, so you guys are going to miss ah. your next session. Okay. Well, no more questions for today. Thank you for coming. I'm very sorry. I enjoyed it. <laughs>